Good morning, Soul Family. Hi, Liger. Good. Want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. You were in my dreams last night. You want to tell everybody? Okay, I am doing my reading this morning. I got up because, um, look at it. It's nice out there. For me, it's cloudy. Um, I, I haven't taken my vitamins. I haven't brushed my teeth. I haven't brushed my hair. Nothing. All I've done is feed my, actually, all I've done is feed my fish. Here, you've got food right here. Right there. There you go. Yeah. Um, but I needed to do this reading right away because um, I was talking to you guys about my dreams yesterday. Um, and uh, wow, they helped me out last night. You know how sometimes we don't like our gifts and then other times. Um, and I don't know how this is going to help somebody, but I feel like I, I have to say this like right away. Um, in order to, I don't know, I feel like it's the time is of the essence because of what I watched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys, I don't know what we're going to choose from. You guys want to do your, your, uh, you guys want to do your, what is it called? Zodiac signs. Fine. Bracelets is going to be one pile. <laughs> Rings are going to be another pile. Um, Necklaces will be another pile. And my um, pendulum will be another pile. Okay? There's your four choices. So while I'm shuffling, I want you guys to listen. And I don't know if this is for the police. I don't know. You know, a lot of times we get messages and... Um, I know that I have information that could help the police. I know that because of the things that I've been shown. And, you know, at times when I see things, I think to myself, is it symbolic or is it literal? But there are things that I believe are actually literal. And so several months ago, and I have these all written down in my dreams, you know, as I have them. So it can go back and be verified um, that I have not been any, in any contact with with anybody because I don't know who these people are specifically well I do know a name that I saw and it's all able to be verified in my dreams so many many months ago I watched a situation where two guys went in well there's two guys that were together I feel like they were in a, in a different country because I feel like this girl was French and this one guy picked up another girl I thought she was a prostitute she was very young she was probably underage but because I, I saw it kind of uh, broken up in in, from one perspective and then I, they went back and showed me from a different perspective. So at one point I saw them walking in the street and then at another point I saw this one go in and, and the woman said, okay, well, you have to put your name down here. And so they signed and the person that was with them felt sick and literally threw up, couldn't do it. So I thought, why, why is that person feeling so upset about it? Um, I thought maybe they were drunk or I didn't know why they were throwing, they threw up. But then I looked at, and as I watched that person that went into the place and was asked to sign his name, didn't sign his own name. He signed his brother's name. I watched that and I said to myself, that's not who that is. I know who that is. It was his brother. So that was the first scene. So then I watched um, another scene where these, these two guys are in this room in a house. And they have this girl in the back room. And one guy says, do you want to come in? And he says, no. The, the person that I'm looking at says, no, he doesn't want anything to do with it. And so the other guy says, like, okay. So he goes into this back room with this person and he hurts this girl. I think he raped her. He, he picked her up and I think he raped her. All I know is he, he hurt her really badly. And then there was running. And um, I actually literally got an email. I got an email from somebody and it was a it was written in French to me months and months ago um, and uh, I looked up the meaning of it and because I had just watched the dream the night before the person didn't tell me what had happened but they said that it's not what they are not who you think they are and they called the person Christian Gray and I wrote back <laughs> to whoever this was and I said it isn't who you think it is the person that wrote their name down is not the person whose name was written. 
he wrote his brother's name down and this is the name of the person who did it and I gave the person's name and I just left it like that because that's what I saw I didn't give his last name I gave his first name so then last night um, what I watched was this is how incredible my dreams are I watched as somebody watched my dream I mean my day went through my readings listened to what I did watched what I was doing on my internet and I thought well maybe that just means they're watching my computer but no they played back what was going on they wanted me to know that they were innocent and um, it would be part of what was going on in my day and in what, what I wrote and what I said in my readings yesterday you know so somebody could have just you know watched the readings and watched the video but then what they did was they showed another few scenes it's kind of like goes between that person's life and my my day kind of interjecting like half between their life and half between what's going on in my day and then they showed me this scene where this lady has these baby this baby and this baby's crying and on the floor you know they're trying to close up shop and I knew that closing up shop meant go to sleep go to bed right and and closing down my computer and all that and this and I wanted to get out of there and the person had dark sunglasses but they wanted to buy white ones now white would be pure would be innocent it means it looks it looks bad but they want they wanted it to be wanted you to know that they were innocent and um, I know what the dreams are showing me at that point but the babies in this store where these two are trying to close up the shop right him and his best friend or because I know that this person is his best friend this person knows what this other guy did and he covered for him, or he, he didn't know what to do. I guess he's just stayed quiet because they, they showed me the scene between these two people again and, and from a different perspective. Do you want to go with this girl? Well, what about your girlfriend? Oh, I'm, we're not together right now. And this person was kind of moving in on this, uh, this other guy. And what I was saying yesterday about how super sensitives, we just know something is wrong, we have a feeling. In my dreams, I was this other person, and I knew that there was something that was wrong. There was something that was going to go wrong. This guy was going to hurt somebody. And so I started running up the stairs, because I am that person. And I said, I'm going to call the police. And the, the, they ran, and I hid. But see, what's going on is, I'm in this place, and I was there. So as that person, they were going to call, somebody called, or somebody was going to call the police, but they would have looked like they were part of it even though they weren't and so they're afraid so now it goes to a different scene I told you about those people that were in this you know they're in the shop they're trying to get out of there which is me trying to go to sleep and um, I've already got our piles so you guys can relax and I'll time stamp it and uh, but this lady's baby is crying and I go over and I say hi to the baby and I'm being nice to the baby and I realize that the baby has pooped on the floor of the shop and I think, oh my God, and I, and I can literally feel it. I, and in my dream, I felt like I was going to throw up. That's what I literally felt and I heard in my head, oh, I'm going to throw up. That's what I heard. And so I, and it's so interesting because I've literally listened to my cats talk and as they show me stories and they go along with my dreams. I know it sounds crazy, but this is what we talked about yesterday. This is how it happens. Um, so, oh, I feel like I'm going to throw up is what I heard in my head. And so... The per I go over to pick up whatever that you know whatever the baby has pooped with a cloth and I and I make a comment because I'm disgusted and I want to say to the mother the baby is thrown up but uh, you know it's pooped on the carpet but I say it to my friend look at this and so the mother comes over and looks at it and says no it isn't poop it's it's um a cookie so you know how cookies babies will chew on cookies and they get all gummy and they look like ugh, you know they're on the carpet and uh, so that's picked up right and now it's time to close up shop. And what else did I see? I said the weather was changing. I looked outside and I think maybe I should get an umbrella because the weather's changing. Look at the weather. We've had hot, hot, sunny weather. And I open up the way. So when I get up this, uh, after this dream, I write it down and I think, you know, I need to get up and talk about this because I've seen a man be burned in a house and they, they, they burned the house and all of the furniture and made it look like it was an accident to get insurance money. But there was a man that was killed in there. That was the man who killed his brother-in-law. I watched it then this thing with the girl that I that that was picked up and it was a young girl and she would go with this guy the reason I thought she was a hooker is because how he picked her up and she just went with him and how he signed for her she was young she was probably a girl a child it was probably in a foreign country because these people travel all over the world and 
also, this person's really good looking. And so she would, if it was a girl that got picked up, she would go with the guy. But I, I feel as though it was a child. And I feel it was though it was almost like, because it was a house, it was almost like parents in the sex trade. I swear to God, that's the energy that I felt. So now let's go back to when I get up. I thought, all right, I gotta get up and I gotta tell this story. Because the, the messages I, I got last night from Spirit, that there is information that you have and it needs to be told. Tell the secret. So even if this is just to put someone else's mind at ease, that I know who did it and that it wasn't them, I watched it. I watched it several times from several different ways and then I watched it again last night. And they were downstairs in a basement of this place and that person wanted to get the hell out of there, didn't want anything to do with it. And the other two ran off. So I get up out of bed to tell the story and I, and I go to open the curtains, right? And, and Liger cries and I look and on the floor, I should have left it to show you guys. Sometimes Liger eats his food too fast and he throws it up, which sounds like me last night, right? I get my information from spirit and I, and I, and I regurgitate it too quickly, which is what I did. I got information, I got upset, I took off my, my, my uh, charm off of my bracelet because I misunderstood. That's why the dark sunglasses were put out and the person wanted the glasses to be white. White would be innocent. They're not, I'm, I didn't do anything wrong. It's not me. I understand that. I know that. And I always knew the person was innocent. I just didn't want to deal with, the, with all of this drama. But it's very important that I say all of this. So I walk over on the floor and right there, Liger has thrown up his food and it looked like poop. But it wasn't, it was his cookies. We call them his cookies. Yeah, the little cookies that I give them, that's what it was. So it's showing me that I saw all that before I even woke up, before I even got out of my dream. I saw all of that happen and it is fact. So this is why I'm telling the dream, that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. So that, you know, I may not have to say anything to police or, or go to whatever, but if somebody has something that, that has been said about them and, and, and they've got, you know, and it's because people have been accused of things. I've told you before, my daughter was molested by my ex-husband. Nobody believed the story or half the people didn't, right? And then I kicked him out anyway. And I told you, children don't lie. No, they don't lie. But sometimes the wrong people are accused. And that's an awful thing too. How could you, you know, you could be convicted of it because there was no proof. I watched it, but that's not proof to, for the police. I watched it in my dreams, but I saw the people I was shown. I know. So even though my daughter was molested and, I, and nobody saw it, I believed her and I trusted her and he was convicted in my mind and it ended up being that it was the truth, right? It was the truth about what happened. But most people were angry with me because they didn't, want, they didn't want to believe it because he was such an upstanding citizen, everybody loved him, and she was just a child that had been trub troubled and had lied, right? But that wasn't the truth. Now you can have the opposite scenario happen, like what I had happen, in, what I have watched, and I have, I'm telling you, I've seen this scene probably four different, from four different angles and perspectives, and it's always the same story. The person was raped not by the right person and the wrong person was accused. I know that, I watched it. I also watched a scene where somebody was accused of hurting a girl, ha manhandling her ag aggressively, but she pushed him, she attacked him. All he was trying to do was defend himself. He held his hand up, she fell backwards and hit her head. He did nothing, I watched it. So I'm just saying this because there are certain things, you know, it looks really, really bad. Remember, sometimes the evidence can look really, really bad and it's not what you think. So that's all I have to say about that. And now we're gonna go on and we're, we're it's at 14 minutes and 11 seconds in. Um, you know what, hold on a second. Fire, earth, water, air. So we're starting with air, good Lord. Fire, earth, water, air, I gotta write this down, fire, earth, water, air, but we're going backwards because that's what's going on in my dreams. I'm going backwards. I'm being shown things again from, from backwards. So we're starting with air at 14 minutes and 39 seconds. And this is the fairy tale oracle. And this is water and truth. Now this is the story of a little girl and she has two, um, I think they're sisters 
and her father asks, it's, it's, it's the father, I think the father says, how much do you love me? And, um, oh, you know what? I saw another scene, sorry, about that same thing. I, I saw them, and I felt like they were at a bachelor party in Vegas or something, and one of the guys said to, to this person, this more innocent one, do you think you can do this trick? And he said, I think so, and he started to attempt to do it, and then he stopped. He couldn't do it because this girl was actually an underage, uh, it was a young um, trans, transsexual, it was a boy. And he felt it was too young and he couldn't do it and he stopped and he left. But the other person did. So it's the same scenario that I keep being shown. And I feel like the person is afraid of this person because I feel like it's a father. I feel like it's a father figure. And they're afraid of this person and of going against them. So there's even more evidence. And it's all in my dreams and it can all be verified at the dates and times that I was shown. So there. And look at my camera just flashed right then. I feel like I am being watched. How interesting. So the number is 44, first of all, for you guys. And the 44 number is speaking about angels. They're giving you extra comfort, love, and support right now. And they want you to ask them for help with everything. And they want you to listen to the guidance that they give you through your intuition, which is what I'm following, right? I'm, I don't know what good this will do other than it has to be said. So the king says, you know, basically... How do, you, how do you feel about me? Or how much do you love me? So there's the message. How much do you love me? Like that, that man who, who did this. And, and basically to the child, how much would you love me? Are you going to keep quiet? Are you going to defend me? You know, I'm your father. But in this message, it's tell me how much you love me. And the first ones are, are you know, oh, I love you. One says, um, I love you as much as my eyes. My phone flashed again. I know you guys are watching this. I love you as much as my eyes said the oldest daughter, and the other one said, I love you much as my heart, and the younger one says, I love you much as water and salt. Well, the king, who's very vain and very proud, he's angry, and he's like, what? You know, what, what is that, water and salt? You know, you wouldn't give me your eyes, you wouldn't give me your heart, you wouldn't give me, you know, your, what was it, eyes, heart, and the other one's only going to say something about salt and water, so he's pissed off. He calls the executioner. This is how brutal things were in the fairy tale times, right? But think about it in symbolic terms because of what I've just told you. Calls the executioner and says, take her away. And says, you're going to be, you're going to be killed for such disrespect. And so they take her away. And the daughters, the sisters, follow this little one. And they follow the executioner. And they, and they, and they plead on the mercy of the executioner. And they say, please don't do what Father said to do. And they and convince him instead of taking the heart of the little dog and bringing that heart back to the father because the father wanted proof that the daughter had been taken care of. So then they take the other, their sister, and they hide her in the forest. And she's out there living in the forest, gathering her nuts and berries. That's what she lives on. And when she's out there, she's found by a magician. And the magician takes her to the nearest kingdom, to the king's son. And he, he sees her and he falls in love with her and he, he marries her. So at the wedding feast, all the kings of the kingdom are invited. And of course, this girl, her father was a king from another land. He was invited. So all of the, all of the guests were served all of this fine food and wine and water. All except for this, and, and water because they needed water to wash. Because when they would travel back in those days, it would be very dusty on the road. Funny, I watched this last. Phone is flashing. I know what this is meaning. I watched this in my dream, in a movie actually, the other night. The part about the dust. And it's about, it's about keeping a secret to protect somebody, basically, um, is what I'm watching. But anyway, this one king, because she knew it was her father, and now she's dressed in finery. She's older. She's grown. And she is the bride. He's not expecting his daughter to be alive, right? He thinks she's dead. And so she says everybody is to be given this, the salt and the water, the water to clear themselves, uh, wash themselves, and the salt to, to taste their food, and um, water to drink, and everyone but him. Now, he's traveled a long way. He's very thirsty. He's very dusty. And she could see that he's not quite right in his mind. Because of, uh, he has such guilt over what he had done to her that he's, he's actually got crazy. Now, my phone is flashing again. So whoever it is that has done this to their child, who has blamed their child for what they have done, and is carrying the... My phone keeps flashing. I know you guys are watching this. And is carrying the guilt of the sin that they committed... It's, they're crazy. Their mind is not right. They're going crazy because of what they've done. And so she's watching her father. He's unable to eat. He can't drink the wine. He's so thirsty for water. The food is, he needs the salt. 
Finally, she stands up and says, Vanish the grief from your eyes, Father, and look upon me. And she wants him to look at her and realize that she's still alive. Can you guys see my phone flashing? It's crazy. Basically, she calls him out in front of everyone. You killed me. You caused me to be killed because I told you I loved you as much as salt and water. And now you will see. Now you have seen what it is like to eat without salt and without water. And the father saw what a fine woman his daughter was standing before him. His pride was broken, and all of that sorrow and grief that he'd been holding inside broke inside of him. And finally, he had allowed the tears to fall that he'd been holding back. And those tears he tasted, and that was his first taste of salt that he wanted so badly. And he tasted the truth. And he recognized that his daughter spoke the truth. She loved him the truest of all. She was speaking the truth. He was never that same king again. He was forever changed. He never was eager to kill because of his pride. The grief broke him. And the lessons that he had learned, he had learned the truth. And he recognized that kindness was a better praise than all the world. He was a good king, he became a better father, and the ones in the land were happy to be under his rule. So the message is about speaking the truth, and that often the, the truth when you speak it is punished. Now, have you kept a secret? You know that this one, this is someone that you care about, this is a family member, this is a friend, but they have done something that you know is illegal, it's wrong, and here you're torn, this is my family, there should be loyalty to my family. No. This somebody has done something, it's wrong. Yes, they're gonna, they're gonna be angry at you. You're gonna turn against them, but you have to speak the truth. And you will be punished for speaking the truth. Now, what if you stepped forward and spoke the truth about what you saw, and then you were punished as well because you didn't come forward right away? That will happen in the law, won't it? But it will be worth it. Even if you had to spend time, even if you had to be punished as well, because you spoke the truth. So right now, the time is here to speak the truth. It's not the time for you to make others feel good or to placate others. This is about saying how it is and why things were. This is the most healing thing that you can possibly do at this time. And be prepared that you may suffer in the short term, but in the long term, you will be rewarded. So. This is about the basic telling of the truth, the, the, the full truth, without, without sugarcoating it. It's about plain honesty, truth, and clarity. It's about, you know, the things that we need to survive. It's about love not being tested. It's about anger is, is anger and pride are, are, can kill. So it doesn't have to go as deeply as I was watching in my dreams. It could be all symbolic and that you have done something and in order to protect another person, you have been hurtful to someone else. Even though you knew it wasn't the truth, you went along with them because you were trying to appease them. And you hurt somebody badly because of your actions. They were your family, you were being loyal to them. But you know it was wrong and now's the time to speak your truth. There's been pain caused, hurt caused. You have to speak your truth. Peace. And here we are, somebody who's got their head tied up in knots. Hi. Everyone sees you. Yes. I can't sleep at night. My head is pounding. I've got all of these thoughts in my mind. I just want peace. I just want peace. Look how everything is up in knots. I've got, I've been thinking this over and over and everything is, I've got all these different scenarios. I've got all these different things compartmentalized. I just want peace. Now, if you're not part of this, this story, you know what you're meant to tell the truth about. This could be, you know, just the basic easy truth. Somebody asks you something and you don't want to tell them because you think it's going to hurt their feelings, but you can't lie. Even white lies, they grow bigger and bigger, and one lie becomes another lie, and then another lie, and pretty soon there's so many lies that you can't keep them straight. You can't keep them straight and tied up neatly in these little packages. So right now, Spirit is saying, let peace be upon you. 
I'm seeing the white straps and the white pearls. That's, that's innocence and that's truth and it's purity. When we balance silence with activity, we discover true peace of mind, the source of all joy and happiness. So let your hair down, relax. Whatever's going on in your life right now, you need to allow things to calm down. Bring yourself into a place of peace. A true master finds peace even amidst the chaos. We all have the ability to find the peace we need. It's within ourselves. I'm looking at the bracelets. Bracelets identify you. If you go to a, a nightclub, you've got to wear a certain bracelet, 21 or over, to get into this club. This is also trading beads. And I know that in other countries, children are traded. These messages are really loud. I'm also looking at the, the darkness and, and the healing and the love. This is addiction. This person was a, as a sex addict. He's addicted to ch young children. This person was a rapist that I watched. There's darkness there, but there's healing and there's love. And it comes from telling the truth. Now for you, if you're finding yourself in a place of consternation, you're just stressed out, you need to go out in nature. Go to a place where it's quiet and peaceful, where you can find your thoughts, where you can, where you can sort things out. You can organize things. Work-related concerns. We keep getting this work-related concerns. I'm having problems with my work. This is a work associate. If I speak up what I need to say, I'm gonna lose my job. It's worth it in the long run. Spirit will absolutely reward you. If you have work-related concerns, go to Spirit and ask for help. Do the things that you can do. Get things organized. Write down your lists. Make your calls. Formulate a plan. Listen to the guidance that Spirit sends you. Go into meditation. What is it that you're feeling? You need to feel what you're feeling. I felt that person's fear last night at what was happening. At first I felt they know there's something going on and then they were afraid. They were not a part of that. They were afraid. Now, feel what Spirit wants you to to know what are the what is the impression that you're getting what is your intuition saying to you do what you can and then surrender it to spirit whatever it is that you need help with as far as your work and then let it go rest spirit will bring you ideas forward they will line you up with the perfect person people circumstances but you know when spirit will help you with this? When you are following your spiritual path. If you are not following your spiritual path and you are this one, <laughs> do you think spirit's going to help you? Karma is going to help you learn your lesson that you didn't learn the way you should have learned it. At 28 minutes and 30 seconds, 36 minutes in, we go to the pile of necklaces. You've got the moonstone, which is your intuition. Paying attention to your intuition. It's also paying attention to your dreams. The number three is shown here again, coming full circle, completion. Also, the ascended masters helping you. The lapis lazuli is about speaking the truth, and it's connected to the moonstone. Speak what's on your heart. And the soulmate pendant. Is your heart tied up in knots? Speak your truth. Who is this? This is water. The first one was air. Trust, the wood maiden. So you see this little fiery red head and she's holding on to that little baby goat. Goats have been coming up a lot lately for me. Baby goats, they're so cute. Have you ever watched them running and skipping? They're so adorable. People have baby goats. For pets, they're super cute. So this story 
is about a little girl who lived alone with her mother and she had two little goats and they didn't have much money they were quite poor but despite their circumstances she was always happy and she was very pleasant to be around everybody liked to be around her she likes to sit out by this birch tree by her little house where the goats are in the pasture when it's warm and it's her job to take care of them and to take the fur or the hair I don't know what they call it from the goats and spin the fleece her name is Betushka and she's to bring home a full fleece full of this every day that's her job she would go out by the wood by the tree and she would play with the with the she would basically play with the spirits and she would dance and she would play games and she would sing to the goats and to the trees and to the birds and the goats fur that she would spin to fleece she would spin it around her head and do this little dance humming away as she worked she was very happy every day her mother gave her a piece of bread so she wasn't too hungry so this I mean they didn't have much she would wind the flax around her head and she she would take the little basket and go romping through with the little goats following behind her and when she got to the tree she would pull the fibers from the flax that, that were wrapped around her head because she didn't have anything to, to wrap it around and then with her right hand she would let down the spindle and she would allow this would this is her little routine this is what she would do <clears throat> and this it's actually a beautiful little setting you know even though she was quite hungry and quite poor she's in this beautiful little glen and the goats are nibbling away and when it got to be about midday of the sun she would call the goats to her and she would give them a mouthful of bread because she wanted them to stay close to her she didn't want them to run off into the woods and hunt for berries because there were berries in season and when she finished her bread and she would get some fruit too she would jump up and she would dance and sing and this is her little this is her little day so one day when she was doing this little dance in the woods she realized she was no longer alone and in front of her was this beautiful maiden and she was dressed in clothes that had been spun from cobwebs from the and her flowers were from the forest and it was in, they were set in her hair and she had long golden hair that fell to her waist so this little girl Batushka looked oh she looked up and her mouth falls open she sees this beautiful you know princess standing in front of her and she says to this maiden but she says something to her without speaking she says from from her mind to the others do you love to dance and she was so kind this maiden spoke to her this way I've had this happen before somebody spoke to me without speaking it happens in my dreams all the time she was very very kind and her voice was very gentle and at first the little girl was frightened but she felt herself relaxing and she was she answered with a bright smile yes I could dance all day I love to dance so they danced together and they heard beautiful music and the birds were there and the little girl forgot about everything but dancing because she was so excited and then all of a sudden she realized the sun was gone and the birds stopped singing and they went to their nests because their mothers had called them home and she realized she was unhappy for the very first time she didn't do the work she had done and her mother needed that help and she recognized she'd let someone down she didn't understand the goats even felt her sadness they didn't know what was wrong so what the story is it's about a balance between working and having fun about being responsible and about balancing the fun uh, balancing your work and, and your responsibilities with, with your joy and having an easygoing time and even though the fairy sees to it that her basket was full so she didn't have to worry she did feel guilty and then at the same time she was longing for what she experienced she wanted that so the fairies come and they tell her not to fuss not to worry they filled her basket and they allowed her to dance and have fun instead of to work they let her play instead of working all day but her mother knows something's not right because something isn't her daughter's not the way she was before there's something different so finally the mother tells she's told that she tells her mom about the dancing and about the fairies and when she does that the spell is broken and she no longer has the help from these fairies so her mother knows her mother's kind of mad because she knows that the that the daughter had met this fairy 
And this fairy is one who actually had actually hurt other little boys. They'd actually, she'd killed them. But she could be kind to little girls. So what are we supposed to think about this? That parents should allow their kids to be kids instead of be little servants? But before that little, the spell was broken, that fairy spun the birch leaves into gold. And even though there weren't very many, that all of a sudden they had enough with this gold. Enough to buy the farm with, with good land and with cattle and their own well and trees. And she got dancing shoes and lessons and pretty clothes to wear. But she never got to the same level of happiness that she got before meeting that wood maiden. She never got to that ecstatic height that she got when she danced with the fairy. She loved it when she was playing in that little field and she was doing her work. And she loved the magic that she felt when she was with that fairy was never again felt. <clears throat> so basically it's talking about that although what you're going through might seem unreal and you might be doubting what you're experiencing, you need to trust it's taking place for a reason. It's like me, what I watched. I don't doubt it, but I know that it's, it's magical because I watched what was going on on the floor with my cats before it happened and then it was right in front of my feet. I know by watching that that what I was shown in my dream was also the truth. So it's, it's you. You've got gifts that have been offered to you and you shouldn't question them. Put away your cynicism and be very careful about who you share your gifts with because some people can use you in a way that's harmful. And remember I told you in my dreams I watched somebody that I love that is known for his gifts and he was put to use in a way that was, they said they called the machine and he worked for them. That's how they treated this one. So recognize that they will rob you for, of what's precious to you. And some people won't believe you about the gifts that you have. You may listen to my story and not believe any of it. I don't care. I know it's the truth. I've watched my cats talk. I've watched this whole conversation between these two, which I thought were people. And then I got up and literally watched my cats do it. I heard what they were talking to each other in their heads. I told you when I was a little girl, I spoke the language of the animals. Well, I did. I do now. I hear them talk to each other. When my eyes are closed, I hear them talking. They play out just what I watched. I've got it written down in dreams. I've taken pictures to prove it. But, you know, others don't believe you, and, and that's fine. The fact is, you know. So hold your gifts close like I do and trust that what you're shown is what, it's, what it is. Even if you can't prove it in logical terms to other people. It's also a message about being content with the simple things in life. She was so happy to be when she was poor dancing in the, in the field, in the meadow. It was beautiful. She was at peace. And recognize that when you're a wonderful giving person, it brings you rewards naturally. She got all of those things because she was a good person. And realize that spirit, as in the form of fairies or dragons or angels or unicorns or whatever it is that comes to you, fireflies that are actually fairies, they will come to the innocent and the ones who have a, a kind, gentle temperament. And recognize that even little rewards can bring about big changes. And recognize also that knowing something can bring a great price. The number six is important. This is the tower. Now, a lot of people are concerned about the tower because it's a sudden change. It's a big, tumultuous change. It can be very shocking. <clears throat> you may learn information that I've been getting this from spirit and I'm a little nervous and I have to admit the honest truth. I am nervous. Because I know that something shocking is about to come out. And it's going to end up for the better, but it might be, but I'm, I'm going to have to make a choice and I'm going to have to refuse something. I've already been shown this. So when you look at the tower, it can be a tumultuous shock, but it's also a very positive. And sometimes the tower can be very, very positive. Things get sh shaken up. You don't understand what's going on, but something amazing happens for you, and it's a wonderful blessing. In the end, it's always a blessing. But it's all about growth. 
So accept the lesson. And when things don't go our way, something more important to the growth of our soul is in the works. So you may be getting that answer, that something that you were hoping for is not going to happen for you. Maybe something you saw didn't play out the way you thought. Maybe somebody else that you were waiting for goes and marries somebody else. Maybe the job goes to someone else. You were counting on it. You thought you were going to get it, and it went to someone else. Maybe you're fired. Maybe you lose your house. Who knows what, what the, pos the negatives can be? But there, it's all about growth. It may happen in six hours. It may happen in six days. The number six is, is important. Six weeks. The sixth month. January, February, March, April, May, June. It's this month. Wow. So it's happening quickly. That's what I feel. Accept the lesson. And when it doesn't go your way, realize something more important is there. Spirit knows what it's doing. You may have lost something. But what you're going to get is better for you. I'm a Pisces moon, so that's what that message is for me as well. So now we go to, at 41 minutes and 4 seconds in, we go to... Oh, wait, no, that's... Is that the order it is? Yes. We go to... And this is how I organized it. If you guys... Um, if you saw it in a different order, it's this particular one. This is the, my pendulum. The sight... This is interesting. This is all about seeing, the inner knowing, about what I've been talking about. <clears throat> the number 43 is the age of somebody. Um, so there's an old fairy, and she says that if you wipe pollen across your eyelids, you'll be able to see fairies. She's a wise woman. And in this tale, there is a wise woman, and there's a healer that comes to her door. She knocks on the door at midnight. At midnight, isn't that unusual? So as she opens the door, there at the threshold stands a funny little man. And he asks the healer to come with him. He says his wife and baby are ill and, and he can't take care of them. So she doesn't like the way this guy looks. But when you were a healer, you go when you were called. So he helps her onto the back of his horse. And it's a wild black stallion with eyes of fire, and together they ride into the night. And when they get to the cottage, she's called to the mother's side. She hands a pot of ointment to the good woman and tells her to stroke the baby's eyelids with ointment as soon as it awakens. So she does that. She awakes the child's awakening. As the baby opens its eyes, the ointment is gently wiped. It smells of pollen and sunshine and butterfly wings. So she's curious about this. So she takes it and she wipes that upon her own eyes. And then slowly, as she looks around her, she's entranced. For the woman that she is, is incredibly beautiful. Her voice is like a bell chime, and the child in front of her is prettier than any baby she'd ever seen. After so many years of nursing them, how, how odd. Their clothes are spun of the silver gray, finest silver gray silk. And then these little brothers and sisters, they're all pointy-eared and big-eyed and pale as snow. Everything is strange. Remember I talked about psychedelic yesterday? Look at the wings. It's like she's on something, right? Everything's changed around her. She's seen things in a different light. She actually is able to see the truth. She didn't see the truth of things before. But she's very wise and she sees that she needs to keep quiet about this. So... She puts the lady back into bed and she realizes she's well enough to, to, to leave her to rest and the baby is cared for. So she says, can I go home? So the ferryman takes her back to her cottage and in the morning when the sky breaks in dawn, he arrives to hand her a purse filled with gold coins, more money than she'd ever seen. He thanks her very gruffly but with, with respect and then he leaves. So the next day she goes to the market and she takes some of the gold with her to buy the things, some of the things that she'd never been able to afford before. And who do you think she saw? That little fairy man. He's running around plucking, plucking fruit and flour from hats and eggs from the, from the hens and nobody seemed to notice. They don't seem to mind. Clearly they're, they're not seeing him. 
How interesting. So she's very grateful for his generosity from the day before because often she was only paid in herbs and, and simple things, but this time he'd given her gold coins. So she curtsies and she smiles and she wishes him a pleasant day. And she says, how's your wife? I hope your wife is good and your little one as well. But she's startled as the fairy man jumps back and he's very angry. And he says, what? And he yells at her. But when he does, nobody looks around. Nobody, nobody seems to notice. And he says, you can see me? And she says, yes. And then she starts to worry. She's got this chill crawling up her spine. And he says, you see too much. And now he says to her, pray, with which eye do you see all of this? And she backs away. She's touching her right eye. And he strikes her with a wand or a stick. I don't know what it is. Just something that has like energy, you know, sparking from it. And she falls to the ground. And oh, the, the little fairy man cries out, the ointment, the ointment. Ugh! Take that for meddling with what doesn't concern you and you will not see any more. And she never saw from that eye again. So when this message comes forward, recognize that there are times when you see what you see with your gifts in your sight. And sometimes you intuitively know things more than others want you to know, which is me. And you must choose wisely when to speak of it and when to keep silent. Now, what's interesting to me is if I was not meant to have told my story, I would not have given my message before Spirit gave me this message. But there are times that because of the gifts we have, we need to keep them to ourselves. There are ones that boast about the gifts they have. And that's, that's not what you do. You know, you brag about gifts you have. Now, gifts don't have to be sacred gifts like um, your clairvoyance or your, um, your abilities. They can be any gifts that you have. Braggers. When people brag, I have issues with braggers, right? We don't want to be around people that brag. That's not, when you're given something, anything, anything that you have is considered a gift. Anything that works for you is a gift. When you brag about it, that is no way to treat your gifts. You're, you're disrespecting your gifts. You're supposed to give and use your gifts with humility. And when somebody asks something for you, for you to, to, to use your gifts, that's when you do so. You're not supposed to take anything from people, from spirit, without them offering it to you first. So it's like when you have a connection, it's about using the connection you have in a positive way. You may have gifts. I've spoken of this before. There are many people that have gifts. They're not working in the light. They take the gifts that they have been given and they use them to bind people, binding spells. They use them to remote view and spy on people. That is not how spirit wants you to use your gift. Your gift is to be given of service and to bring goodness to others. But there are those that employ ones with their gift to remote view and find things out so that they know where to go and steal things, so that they know where to go and harm people. As I was saying, I watched somebody who has a gift and that gift has been learned and he has been used to do wrong things with his gift. They call the machine and he comes and he works for them. Think before disclosing your gifts. Your psychic gifts are to be treated with respect. Don't attempt to take another person's power by binding them, by coercing them, by using your gifts to plant things in their mind, to plant messages in their dreams. You may have a connection, a spiritual connection to another. Do not disrespect that gift. Don't abuse it. Treat spirit and nature with respect. There are fairies all around. You don't kill your animal messengers. They are spirit creatures. That is why fireflies and bees and I don't kill bees. I don't kill ants. I don't kill any animals. They are my messenger. Every single insect, bug, bird, animal 
has a message for you. They are spirit creatures. That's why we don't kill them. None of them should be eradicated. None of them should be hunted. It's not okay to put a trophy of a head of an animal upon your wall. It's not okay to use animals to test your cosmetics and burn their eyes out and torment them. It's not okay to use them in experiments. It's not okay to, to have them live in cages where they can't even move. They are lying on their side their whole lives as they're fed and some force fed so that they can be plumped up enough so that you can kill them and eat them for your food. It's not okay to do that. When you do speak of your gifts, use them with wisdom and discretion. This is about asking, not taking. And sometimes it's not wise to speak about what you see without being invited to first. So I'm going to ask a question for myself. Is this reading, reading and what I said, okay, first of all, you can watch and watch as I do this. Okay, please clear. Please show me a yes. I want you to see all of this because I know, I know too many times. How can I do this where you could, there in the light? I want you to watch my arm, my whole arm. Please clear. Please show me a yes. Thank you. Please show me a no. Is this reading meant to be shared tonight, today at this time? Is it safe for me to send this reading out with the information that I said? I want to see it big. I want to see it really loud, if it's clear, if it's safe. Thank you. All right. I just had to do that for myself <laughs> after that message. 5151. Wow. Okay, hold on, you guys. Um, there are more messages. I just got a little bit carried away because I got a little bit nervous. So 5151, I know that that's, that, that's a code. Isn't that a, isn't that a code? Um, hold on a second, 5151, I, I think it is. 5151, meaning, meaning, 5151, 5151, Urban Dictionary, 5150. Okay, that's when somebody loses their mind, right? Or they're put into a mental hospital, they call the 5150. Um, or when they're put in psychiatric for observation, right? But 5151, 5151, there's a reason for us. So fives and ones. 5151, but 51, 5151. 51. After a 51, okay, it does. It does mean something specific. I thought it was 5150, but um, what is 5151? The confusion lies in the fact that the 5150, 5151, and 5152 use the same exact form to indicate different parts of the process of psychiatric detention. What does a psychiatric hold? Okay, I want to know what a 5151 is completed when the detainee is brought to the LP facility where a 5151 can be conducted. The 5151 can be done by the person designated by the facility, a PE team, or an ED physician or hospital. 5151 is a face-to-face -face psychiatric assessment that is made at a facility to confirm that the patient requires psychiatric detention. The 5151 is a decision by the designated staff as to whether or not to proceed. If the 51, if the decision is not is made not to proceed with this 51, to proceed with 5152, wait a second. The 5151 is a decision by the designated staff whether or not to proceed with the 5152. If a, if a decision is made not to proceed, this is a mean to drop the hold. So 5152 is the hold. 5150, they bring you in. 5151, they observe you to see whether you should be held. And 52, you're held. So you were not held. You were, you were brought in and observed. Now, as I told you, many people with gifts are, are taken in by their family members. I keep hearing the song, all my friends are heathens, take it slow. This is the story. Hold on, this is why this is coming out. Thank you. God, I love how spirit speaks to me. All my heathens, all my friends are heathens. All my friends are heathens. I needed to know this. This was really, really important to me. 
All my friends are heathens, take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Please don't make any sudden moves. You don't know half of the abuse. All my friends are heathens, take it slow. Wait for them to ask you who you know. Please don't make any sudden moves. You don't know the half of the abuse. Welcome to the room of people who have rooms of people that they loved one day docked away. They've put them away. They've, um, they've docked them in. So heathens, we are considered heathens. We are. I'm a heathen. Anyone who doesn't, who is outside of the realms of religion or the norm, we are considered heathens. The ones who work with angels and with spirits. People think we're crazy. People think we work with demons. If you have a religious family and you are speaking to spirit and you are showing them things and know things ahead of time and they send you, like I have seen friends of mine, family members have sent them into a psychiatric ward to be ex assessed. You go into a ward with people that are fucking crazy. You're not, but there are people that are killers that are in there. You don't know half of the abuse. I've had to be held in there because of what my family did to me. I wasn't crazy, but you know what happens? They force you to take drugs. You have to. My friend was forced to take the drug. When she went in, she was fine. But when they, they were given the drug, because you're a super sensitive, I told you, I can't take Vicodin. I can't take pain medications. I, it alters my mind. So when the drug was given to them, it made them go crazy. It made them feel crazy. My friend w wondered about her own sanity. And it wasn't until she was finally released, but she was in there for a while. And when she was in there, she was raped by one of the people in there. This is all truth. So this came to me. I know why it came to me. Welcome to the people, to the room of people. You know, just because we check the guns at the door doesn't mean our brains are going to change from hand grenades. You're, li you're loving on the psychopath sitting next to you. You're loving on the murderer sitting next to you. You think, how did I get here sitting next to you? But after all I've said, please don't forget. All my friends are heathens. Wait for them to ask. That's what, these are where I am. I'm living in a, in a house with these people. We don't deal with outsiders very well. They say newcomers have a certain smell. Remember I said I kept smelling that smell. I didn't want what everybody else smelled. I wanted that other smell. I knew what I liked. I knew what I smelled. Uh, yeah, I've got trust issues, not to mention, they say they can smell your intentions, right? We can smell things. I can smell it a mile away. There's something wrong with you. There's something not right with you. There's danger here. I can, I can read you like a book. And remember, I was, said, I was told by somebody at one time, you ask too many questions. They knew I could read them. These ones have trust issues because of what has happened to them. You'll have some weird people sitting next to you. You think, how did I get here? But after all I said, all my friends are heathens, take it slow. Wait, so don't move quickly. You don't understand why, what I've been through, why I'm afraid. It could be that other people have learned about who you are and, and they've treated you like you're crazy. So you don't want to open up your gifts because you have done that before and look what's happened. You could have been one that's been put into a psychiatric ward. You may have thought you, went, you were crazy, but you weren't. Because as we awaken and, and our gifts open, sometimes it feels like we can't control, we can't control things. It's, things happen that we can't stop. And we might question our own sanity, but you're not crazy. And neither was my friend Actually, there was three that I know that were put in the hospital. They aren't crazy, none of them. Many of them have gone to places like that because they haven't learned how to manage their gifts. God, that came up for a reason. That was amazing. Thank you for that, Spirit. Awaken, that's what's happening. We're awakening. I'm telling you that gifts that some people have can never be explained to other people. It's called psychic. You see visions before it happens. I see things before they happen. Then they happen. I've watched earthquakes take place. I've seen where it happened. I've seen everything that's happening in Napa, California, 45 minutes before it happened, and then I hear it on the news. I have it all documented. It's real, but it sounds crazy. My daughter said to me, Actually, she didn't say it to me. My daughter posted on Facebook, and my friends told me because my daughter blocked me, didn't want me to see it. My, this is the day you cut your mother off. My mother needs psychiatric help. She talks to 
she thinks she talks to angels. I'm worried about her. She's not well. She's in love with a, a person that doesn't exist. She calls him a, what did she call him? A phantom. He's not real. I'm not crazy. I didn't find out about that for a while. My friend told me and I didn't address it with my daughter for quite a long time. And then finally I did actually the last time I was in Wisconsin because something else had been said and I finally addressed it. It was a huge fight. We didn't, and I said, I need space from you. I need space from you. This is not okay. This is disrespectful. I don't care what you feel and what you think and what you believe to speak about your mother like that publicly is disrespectful. I want space from you. And it caused a distance between us. Now, looking at it from her perspective and for you to look at it from your family's perspective, they don't understand. They are afraid. That's where forgiveness comes in. I love my daughter. And when I talked about it, we started to talk again. When I was angry, I said, did you say this? And she goes, what do you mean? First of all, she denied it. And I know that she did because I had my best friend told me and my best friend would never lie to me. So I know she did it. And I've, I've, I've seen it several times and I've never called her on it. But that day when I called her on it, I, was, I, lost my, I lost my cool. I did. I lost my cool. I was screaming. I was so angry. I was so angry because she had actually gone to, to, to someone that I care about, that I loved, and told him to stay away from me. And I said, are you kidding me? I didn't know that. It took him months before he told me. But in my dreams, I saw her do it again. And so I asked her, did you do this? to my twin soul as well. And she's like, you're crazy. But I know that she did it to someone else at another time, someone that I was dating. She literally did. She wrote to him and said, stay away from my mother. It took him two months before he told me. And then I confronted her. She thought he would hurt me. And so that's what some, maybe family members have done that. Well, yes, I did that. I know that I'm telling the story because it did happen in my life with my twin. They thought they were protecting him from me. And they lied to me and they told me he was with somebody else and to go away. They told him something too. They told him I was with someone else. They lied. They were trying to protect him. They were probably trying to protect him because he's so incredibly gifted and they didn't know what I was. So sometimes our family members do things because they are afraid. I know that my friend's husband who put her in the psychiatric ward didn't do it because he hates her. He did it because he was worried about her. She wasn't able to manage. She wasn't at the time. And I told her, I understand why he did it. You're not managing your gifts. You're not doing very well. You need help right now. And she did need help. And I know other people that have gone in and, and they did need help. Because if you're super sensitive already and then you awaken, maybe you're someone who suffers from bipolar depression. And, it's, and you got to the place where you saw all of these things. You didn't know how to handle it. What if you tried to commit suicide? You do need help. They didn't do it to hurt you. They didn't know that when you went in there, those things would happen to you. I'm sure my husband, her husband, I don't even know if she told her husband that what had happened with her and the, and, the, and the doctor that was in there or the nurse that was in there. But it was scary. It was frightening. So with my daughter, I know she was frightened and I know she, you know, she has a hard time believing this and her son has these gifts too and she doesn't want him to have them. So there comes the forgiveness. There comes us understanding with the awakening process and how challenging it can really be. So keep your eyes open. When we decide to live a more conscious life, we see signs of grace everywhere. Keep your eyes open. Don't try and close your eyes again. When that fairy wiped the pollen across her eyes and her eyes were opened, she saw the truth. I see the truth. Don't go back to sleep because you're afraid of your gifts. The p person that, that, that came to me said that she had these gifts as a child and she purposely went back to sleep because she, didn't, she was made fun of and she couldn't handle it. I, you, you can choose to go back to sleep on your spiritual gifts. I know people who have. I have connected with people that were very awakened, and that's why we vibrated together. We were vibrationally on the same frequency at that time. But because of things that happened to him, and see, Liger represents him. I know. I know it was you. I know it was you. He chose not to remember his dreams or to say that he doesn't remember his dreams. He didn't want to connect to them. He didn't want to admit because it made him sound crazy. Don't go back to sleep. Don't go back to a, a person. I know another person who was very awake, very spiritually connected, and a soulmate of theirs came back into their life, and he had an addiction, addictive tendencies towards her. She dabbled in black arts. She used that black art on, her, on him to bind him and bring him back. And he had this 
this this lust for her, this connection. He knew that she was a soulmate, and he, soulmate, and he felt that he he was supposed to go back to her. And when he did, he went back to sleep. She has gifts. She calls herself a spiritual person, but she has alcohol. She's an alcoholic. She's very jealous. She's very abusive and angry. Those are not gifts from spirit. So she took those gifts and she used them to bind him and hold him back and tie him down. And he's gone back to sleep. Don't allow that to happen to you. I've watched it. Make a commitment to your soul's path. Make a commitment to, the, to whatever your, your project is, to whatever it is that, that, that you have, your eyes have awakened you to. Make a commitment right now. You need to commit to your soul's path first, your spiritual path. You need to commit to yourself. You need to make a commitment and stick to it. If this is your question, if you were wondering, is it, is it a commitment? Yes. Is it safe to commit to this? Yes. Was that person committed? Yes. Open your eyes. See the truth. Whatever it is that you're not seeing at this time, if you keep your eyes open and admit, yes, they were committed. Yes, this is a commitment. If it's something specifically that you need to know, spirit will show you. Does this person actually need to be committed? They are not safe. They are not well. If, is that the truth? Spirit will show you. Is this somebody that was committed and it was not, it was what we, just like with me. I mean, my daughter, if she had been in control of me, I would have been committed. She would have then taken the rights over to everything. My, my work, my, my, my bank account, my, my decisions, everything. I would have had to have had a doctor go in on my behalf. I would have had to go back in after I had been released <clears throat> to be willingly assessed, to be proven that I was able to stand on my own and, and make my own decisions and get my life back in and I was in control of it again. That's what happens. If this has happened to somebody in your life, is that what happened? Spirit will show you. If it's just about committing to your path, spirit will show you. Wow. At one hour and six minutes and 56 minutes in, we go to our last pile, which is all of the rings. Lord of the rings is what I just heard. Lord of the Rings. Now, the rings, a ring is a commitment. A bracelet is a, is a binding commitment as well. Anything that, that is never ending, like a necklace, a bracelet, a, a ring, that is a commitment. So rings, of course, are used in ceremony. Graduations, we're graduating to another level in our ascension and our learning process. Engagements, wedding rings. This is a friendship ring. This is the sacred, if I can, if I can bring this into focus. This is an Irish ring with the clada and the heart and the hands. This is best friends. There can be a family ring. This was my mother's ring. It was left to me. There can be a spiritual ring. There can be a healing ring. There's all kinds of rings. There can be a ring that has special significance to you. Ambition, the tinderbox soldier. <clears throat> that little pug keeps coming up. I hear the commercial on the radio. There's a little pug in a velvet jumpsuit in an air conditioned loft in Los Angeles right now walking around about to drink a kale smoothie. That little pug shows up all the time for me. The tinderbox soldier. I'm interested in the color of her hair, the green, wondering if it's about healing or if it's about sickness because there's skulls around her. Now, when I said sickness, my cat meowed. What, baby? I know, I see you. Um, there's blue, a blue rose in her hair. It's okay. Hold on. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pause you for just a second. I have to put Liger up on his, on his chair. Come here, baby. Okay, it's okay. Come on. There you go. Lay down. Lay down. You're okay. He needs to be with me. It's important to him. If he's allowed to be with me, look at. I'm gonna have to hold this with my hand. If he's allowed to be with me, he'll relax and calm down. So let's talk about this 
this little story of this tinderbox soldier and ambition. So if anybody's ever seen a pug, they've got really big eyes, right? This little one, he's got eyes as big as teacups, like the little girl, right? And there's actually more than one in this story. There's three. We keep getting the number three, and we just got pinged. So that, again, ascended masters, coming full circle completion. It could be that the amount of time as well, three weeks, three days, three hours, three months. Um, for you, the number three, there's a message in that as well. Spirit will let you know what it is or what it's in regards to. So one dog has eyes as big as teacups. One has eyes as big as saucers, and the third one as big as towers. These are the guardians of this chest, and this chest is filled with copper, silver, and gold coins. And the owner is in control of this tinderbox, and these little pugs, they are the ones that they obey what the owner says. And there's a flint, which is like, um, flint is like a, you know, a flint rock is how you would, how would you would start a fire? So there's a flint there that would light the candle, okay? And when the candle is lit, the dogs have to come there and do what they're meant to do. So now we go and we see there's a soldier marching along a road. The war is over and he has nothing. All he has is his uniform. He's basically coming, it's kind of like, look, have you ever watched um, Gone with the Wind, right? Coming back from the north and the south, the, the war. They're coming home, they have nothing. So along the side of the road, he's greeted by a witch and she wants him to do a task. He wants her to get that tinderbox from under the earth and it's, it's inside this hollowed out oak tree. And in return, he will be given a magical piece of cloth to place each of these little guardians on. And he can fill his pockets with as much of the treasure as he can carry with him. But when he sees the little the creatures that are guarding and, and when the witch won't tell him why this box is so valuable, he questions her, right? He chops off her head then, and he takes the tinderbox, and he moves into his new life. Now he's a rich man. Now there's a message there. There's a ping at that point. Hold on a second. I'm going to put my volume down so I'm not distracted. And um, so here, now he's rich, right? He's killed the witch. He's taken this treasure. But there's more to the story. There's a princess that he has yet to meet that's going to ask the dogs to do his bidding to find her. Right? This is what this is what he wants. This is we don't we don't, we don't know this yet. That basically it's about the choices that this soldier makes in order to make his fortune. He's a soldier of fortune. He kills. And he's probably done a lot more than what we've been already shown. And now he's without work, without pay, and he's penniless. So he sees his way out and he takes it, right? He does good things all along the way and has everything that he has ever wanted. He made, he's made that fortune. He's married the princess. He's got control over these three magical dogs that continually keep bringing him money. And what, what the story we see, they, they show a picture and there's like the wedding feast. And you see this little, this image of, the, you see the table set and you see the little dogs kind of looking at him, watching him, right? They're staring at this table. But then they kind of, they, they, they go from this story and they go to the story of kind of like Aladdin, having control over a magical fortune, right? And what, what can and will be done in order to take your power back once one has lost something. So when he cuts the, wit the witch's head off and takes what was hers, because it was hers, that tinderbox, that represents control and ruling over something and the desire to have anything that you want. So, why did he not just take the money? And why would the witch, you know, have sent the dogs after him to kill him and keep her secret safe? And what are people prepared to do to get what they want and to keep their secrets? So, right now, it shows that at times asking for help can be dangerous. And for this soldier, Killing comes easy. He has no problem killing, right? He's done it his whole time. All throughout both stories, you see him killing. He kills the witch, he kills other people. He has no problem. He gets what he wants by killing. So one has power and he, and he has, it talks about when you have this, this great power or wealth, you can force people around you to do what you want. Remember I told you about that person that saw this done and the person was in control over them. 
this was person was in a position of power and this person the one that was that was innocent was afraid so they're forcing you to do things and you can even have the most sought after treasure in the world you could be a princess you could be of royal status you can become king so in this story we 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 already talked about how we hadn't talked about the princess coming forward so it's about also not avoiding fate, okay? So there's a prophecy. This princess, she's gonna marry the soldier, no matter what her parents say. They're gonna try and stop this from happening. So what does this mean for you? It means that, and I, oh God, this is crazy because I was already shown this. I told you that I'm gonna have to make a choice and I'm gonna have to turn something down. Money is gonna be offered or love is offered. Which would you choose? And I thought, well, I have no problem. I would always take, always take love. I would not take money. But right now, this is what may happen. You have to choose and you have to decide what you will do with your money and your power. You might be given an offer that's gonna to lead to danger. There will be rewards. And it might be that there are people that you have to cut out of your life in order to keep your secrets safe. So you got what you wanted but it doesn't mean you weren't seen because the dogs at that wedding feast, they were always witnesses to what was done. So it's your choice. You might be a ruthless person and you might feel like you've gone unpunished, but you will be seen. You will be watched and your life will never be easy and you will never rest. And you can choose to live a different life with different values, but if you become like that soldier, you're going to be, have to prepare yourself to do things that were disgusting and vile in order to get your rewards. So maybe you will never have the consequences. Maybe they won't catch you. But those eyes of the dog are going to be watching you and your soul knows what you've done. So what happened to that soldier? What happened to him before all of this? He was poor. He was in that war, he had done horrible things. Choices, things that he was made to do, he didn't want to do, he couldn't avoid them. And there wasn't a benefit for everyone for the things that he had had to do. And at times, there were ones who were hurt by his choices. So for us, at times, there are ones that will be hurt by the choices that we've made. And we have to decide, was that choice worth it? Was it worth that unending feeling of knowing that you're constantly going to be watched? They're watching me, they're watching me, I know they're watching me, it's that paranoia. Is your ambition gonna grow? When will enough be enough? So it's about a ruthless quest. It's about choosing wisely. How will you be using the gifts that you were given? Which harsh choice is going to benefit the most? What choice can you live with? And can your choices stand up to being watched, examined? Have you sacrificed your integrity, your morals, your honor, your ethics? How are you gonna repay a good turn? This is about reconnecting with the empathy within you. There's a lot going on here because there are those who have gone to war and they've killed and they've done horrible things and they have nightmares and they have chronic migraines because they can't forgive themselves for the things that they did. They went to war because that was expected of them. But the things that they saw and the things that were done were, were wrong and they know it and they've kept a secret and it's made them sick. Now in some cases, you've got to let that out. You've got to forgive yourself. You can't undo the past. In other cases, like the one, they called the machine and he went to work for them. You can't shut your feelings down. A mercenary who goes and kills other people, who steals, who does things, who takes children and, and watches them be raped. I know that this has been done in war. Can you live with yourself by that being done? You know who's done this. There's so many things that I've watched in my dreams. And just like that, the dog's watching. I'm not the police. I can't harm you, but I've seen what you've done. I know who you are. And what's sad is 
I don't want your money. I don't want what your money can buy because I know where that money came from. I'd rather you give that money, all of it, to charity. I don't want anything to do with it. And you know who you are that I'm speaking to. You're looking right at me in that card. I would have nothing than to take that money. I would never take money that has been used to harm another. I would never take money that was stolen from somebody that wasn't yours to take. Perception, my left ear was plugged a second ago and it just opened. Perception, it's all in the way you look at things. Were you somebody who was in a position of, a, of uh, under authority of another um, boss, like in the military? You did things that you should, that, that you, your soul can't live with, your, your conscience can't live with. You went against your integrity. You're a spiritual person. You had an awakening while you were working for that company, but you realized I can't live this life anymore. Did you stop? Did you stop? It would have been a dishonorable discharge. Do it anyway. That's much more honorable than doing what was required of you. If what you knew was wrong, we don't know everything. The news is a lie. Everything we see is, is it's all about money and power and control. You know what you have done. You know the truth of the matter. Did you stand up? Did you speak out against someone that was in a position of authority? I watched that in my dream. Somebody was removed from their position in the military because they spoke out against somebody who had manhandled and molested many of the females in the company. Actually, I also watched as a man was raping the males in the company. And he stood up and said, I won't allow this to happen. And because of that, he lost his position and his money and his inch, everything. That is honorable. It's all in the perception and the way you look at it. I go to war and I do what my, my I, I do this because no, you, you use your brain. I can't do this. On moral grounds, I, I relieve myself of this position. I can't do this. See the past, see the past through the lens of grace, all that is designed to support our spiritual evolution. Okay, have you been like that soldier and you've changed your life and you've awakened and you've realized you have to forgive yourself. You may have nightmares living with what's happened. You can do your best to move forward at this time and release the past. Don't bind yourself. Don't accept the money that they give you. That is one way. Don't accept it. It's blood money. You may think I'm going to, these people are taking children and they're, and they're trafficking and so you go in and you kill them all. Well, you're doing the same thing. What makes you any different? It's blood money. Look at the rings. God. It's all through the veil of perception. So we're, at, we're being asked to see the, through the veil of grace. So we're being asked to forgive ourselves and others. Forgiveness is, is given when people have changed their ways, when people stop doing. Where is the last little message? Communicate clearly. There you go time to communicate clearly it's time to speak your truth if there's something that has been misunderstood it's time misunderstood it's time to communicate clearly communicate clearly what you feel what you need what you desire make sure there are no misunderstandings when spirit wants you to communicate clearly they want you to communicate clearly with them what it is you truly want what it is that you're truly desiring what is it that you need to be shown I want to be shown the offer that's coming towards me, the money, and the lifestyle that I have to say no thank you to. Show me who it is. Is that the truth? That's what I want to know. You know I won't choose the money. I want it to be, and it will be clear, for you, I don't know what you want to ask, but you need to ask spirit communi to communicate clearly with you so you understand how this is relevant to you you need to communicate clearly with others in your life at this time this is my message so 
this is fire signs, so this is important to me. And I am communicating clearly. I'm making it very clear right now. So we'll leave it at that. At one hour and 24 minutes in, wow. Happy Saturday. I think it's Saturday, isn't it? Maybe it's Friday. I never know the day. But there's not one soul on the lake, which I find really intriguing. There's never anybody out on this lake. It's so bizarre. All right, you guys. Have a beautiful day. I love you.